Here I'll present our work entitled Towards Force Estimation in Robot Assisted Surgery Using Deep Learning to Vision and Robot State. My name is Zhonghe Chua and my co-authors are Anthony Jart and Alison Okamura. Force estimation and modulation is an important skill for performing safe robot ass assisted surgery. In the picture shown here, a surgeon is attempting to remove tissue surrounding a delicate blood vessel and has to apply the appropriate amount of tension and compression force so as not to cause damage to the vessel while exposing the tissue to be removed. Such maneuvers are thought to be difficult due to a lack of haptic feedback. Several approaches have been considered for improving surgeons' force estimation and modula modulation ability while performing robot-assisted surgery. The first and most intuitive way would be rendering haptic feedback to the teleoperator. However, the more widely adopted way has been to get surgeons to learn to estimate force without haptic feedback, and this is done through repetition of drills and procedures with post-activity qualitative feedback given. To render forces to the teleoperator, the gold standard has been to use distal force sensing at the tip. However, such sensors are costly and need to meet strict requirements for biocompatibility and sterilizability. For skill assessment and feedback, the gold standard has been expert video review, but that comes at the cost of experts' time and faces the issue of consistency among raters when the number of raters is small. While well, automated performance metrics can and have been proposed as a, to a way to overcome this limitation of the method, there currently is no cost-effective and reliable way to measure forces exerted on the surgical environment, and thus we still run into this problem of a lack of force sensing. These issues have led, thus led researchers to look into indirect force estimation using robot state and or computer vision. These methods can be broadly categorized by the type of estimation approach and by the type of input modalities used. Vision-based methods typically have high computational intensity and this leads to concerns about their suitability for real-time vision-based or force-based haptic feedback. Model-based methods that use state information have had difficulty in predicting the contribution of the most distal degrees of freedom of the manipulator to the interaction force, while the learning type, uh, based methods have not fully utilized all the available state information provided by a surgical robot such as the Vinci Research Kit. For learning based methods in general, there has been an assumption that it is important to capture viscoelastic effects of the manipulation through sequential networks such as recurrent neural networks that can process temporal histories. However, these methods can be slow compared to a, a method that considers only a single time frame to make their predictions. And as with all learning-based methods, there's always a concern about the network's generalizability to unseen cases outside of the training dataset. In this work, we propose a computationally efficient learning-based method that uses vision and robot kinematics and torque estimates to predict force. Uh, and we do this through a network that only considers a single time frame of measurements. We also explore how these methods generalize to unseen scenarios and the relative contribution of each modality to the network's abilities to perform the force estimation. To do this, we created a single time frame type uh, network that used RGB image and kinematic and torque inputs to estimate force. And we benchmark this against an existing recurrent neural network and an existing model based method. We also looked at how the networks that use different inputs, such as only the state input or only the vision input, compared to the network that use both vision and state inputs. More specifically for the state features, we also looked into how kinematics or torques uh, were more useful for improving accuracy by either setting the torque and force features to be zero or the kinematic features to be zero and then retraining networks to predict force. 
We collect our own data set of tools and population through the following experimental setup. A camera assembly was used to capture crop monocular images of manipulations of a silicone artificial tissue with a sponge mounted beneath it. Uh, a force sensor was also placed beneath the tissue and sponge to measure ground truth interaction forces. To change the viewpoint and configuration of the workspace, we translated the robot base and the camera assembly from right to left, making sure to rotate the camera so that the tissue was in the field of view at all times. To help reduce overfitting in the vertical direction, <clears throat> we also took data with the height of the tissue stage translated downwards, as can be seen. Additionally, we created a scenario with an unseen stiffer, red colored material, and an unseen tool as generalization test cases. Here we, I present uh, some of the video clips that we managed to capture in our data set. And I apologize for the flickering of the video. Somehow it's not playing very well on the larger screen. Uh, and from the L3 to the R3 uh, clips here show the lateral translations of the robot and the camera. And the Z1 and Z3 are the ones with the, where the platform of the tissue was lowered in the vertical direction. And on the bottom left, you see the unseen tool and unseen material. Our data set was split into a training set and a validation set consisting of the four configurations uh, shown in the diagram right now. We also use this four these four configurations for uh, the test data set but we extended the test data set to eight more config unseen configurations. The following video is an example of the force predictions for the different models that we studied. The plot of the force trajectories will allow me to highlight some qualitative results that we found. For the vision only model, the force prediction in the y axis uh, shows some under prediction as seen. This is likely because the depth information in, direct, in the direction is low, especially with only, that since we only use monocular images. Overall, the physics-based model shown in gold displays a lot more variability in measurements, and this is likely due to the inaccuracy stemming from movements in the last few wasted degrees of freedom of the manipulator, as I highlighted previously. The recurrent neural network is shown in purple and gives a smoother prediction compared to the noisy estimates from our single time point type networks, but they don't seem to capture the faster transitions of force as can be seen and highlighted in the purple boxes. However, compared to the RNN, the vision and state plus state network showed approximately 3x faster inference speed uh, and similar accuracy. And we think that this makes it a better candidate for use in real time applications. The plot here shows the root mean squared error for each configuration over each axis of predicted force. Over the lateral shifts, we see that each network type has prediction accuracies that do not vary much. Uh, and though the vision network shows some variability in the y-axis axis, like, as I explained earlier. And uh, more interestingly here, we see that uh, in, for Z translations, uh, they do not show much difference from the seen position Z2 compared to the unseen Z1 and Z3 in the X and Y, especially for the vision and, uh, no, sorry, the state and the vision state networks. But uh, one thing to note is that there's an exception in the Z direction forces. We see that the vision network performs very poorly, uh, while the state and vision state networks also do well, uh, not so well on the unseen data. However, the data for the Z configurations had higher palpation forces compared to the other configurations. And because the harder we palpate, the less visual force information we get. And this is especially bad for the vision network. So if we actually remove the higher palpations and control for that, we see that the vision network actually exhibits similar performance across the Z configurations, unlike the networks with that contain state inputs. And this implies that, you know, uh, Z, the vision bit only network does generalize pretty well to translations in the Z stage and it's not overfitting to the Z direction. 
Vision also helps when we estimate forces on an unseen tool. The RM, RMSE plots here show that the vision state model gives better accuracy than the state-only network uh, for unseen tools. And this suggests that vision inputs are generalizing well to the different tool. And, and this can be also seen in the convolutional neural net activation heat maps, which uh, show which pixels contribute most to the force prediction. We see that the activation regions are similar for both tools. And this suggests uh, you know, that the network is looking or activating in similar ways regardless of tool. However, for an unseen material, the vision component of the networks are confounded by a very different looking tissue as you can see here, and the activation maps are extremely noisy. Thus, the inclusion of vision results in the degraded performance of the neural networks. To conclude, our work addresses some of the questions such as accuracy, generalizability, and real-time suitability surrounding the use of learning-based models um, networks for force estimation. And future directions of research should address the simplicity of our data set, which lacks specular reflections and uses a single zoom and has very, a very consistent looking environment, unlike most medical scenes. One way to be think we can address this is would be to use image augmentation methods on our training data and then testing the transfer to more realistic environments or scenarios. Also, since most surgical maneuvers are bimanual, ways to extend this approach to dual manipulators uh, will also be explored as. And lastly, we are currently exploring how our methods perform uh, with real time for real time haptic feedback with the human in the loop. And we are excited and can hopefully share those results in the near future with the community. Thank you.